now as the teacher, I have to worry about distributing my questions to kids. Make sure that all the kids are speaking. Don't let someone shy away. I mean, how many times when you're teaching, do you, you think, oh, I haven't called on Celia in so long. I've got to make sure I, I call on Celia today. And Celia's sitting over there, and I, I'm teaching, things are going by, and it, there's something in that part of the room that I was going to do. What was it? And I walk over there. By the time I get over there, Celia's invisible. Because the reason I don't call on Celia is Celia has mastered the art of being invisible <laughs> to the teacher. And kids do that. They know how to, they just know how to do it. And then when you call on Celia, when you finally do it, there's a long, painful wait. She doesn't blurt out an answer. She blushes. She's shy. Everyone in the class is dead silent because they're fascinated. And it's painful. But as a teacher, what is good teaching, particularly for English learners? Because Celia's embarrassed about her English. She's not sure she understood you. She's not sure what it's going to sound like when it comes out of her mouth. You've got to wait for Celia. You can't let that human reaction allow Celia to shy away from mathematics. And then when Celia answers, the, the truth is, the ki other kids in the class identify with Celia. Everyone's heart warms up a little bit. Follow up with a question for Celia. That's telling Celia, I believe in you. That's telling the whole class, let's wait for each other. And let's not run away. As soon as, the instinct is, as soon as she blurts out, as soon as she gets an answer out, you go, thank God, and you move to someone who talks fast. <laughs> That's exactly the wrong thing to do. A follow-up question for Celia. We're going to wait for you. We're all in this together. That's that kind of spirit.